Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we discuss digital images and their representations. So let's start with the fundamental principles of image formation. The process that includes all the radiometric and geometric transformation that allow us to capture a 2D representation of a real world 3D scene. And this process relies on the coordinates of this 3D scene denoted here by W1, W2 and W3. And we need to map them into a 2D image consisting of spatial positions R and S, which represent the intensity values in the image. This again, very similar to the audio conversion, relies on converting an analog signal to a digital one with sampling and quantization. But here, the resolution that we choose for our target image determines the sampling granularity in terms of our picture elements or pixels. And the number of bits that we use per pixel determines the precision with which we save the intensity. We can also think of a digital image as a pixel matrix and the typical representation is a 24-bit color image where each color channel, R, G and P, uses 8 bits or 1 byte per pixel. And if you also want to add transparency or the opacity of a pixel, then we would use another channel or eight more bits, resulting in a 32-bit A RGP image. However, we could also use fewer bits to store images, for example, only one or two, which allows us to represent grayscale images, either as a binary image with just black and white, if we use one bit, or if you use two bits, we could save a grayscale image with four different grayscale values. A typical grayscale image, of course, would use eight bits per pixel, which results in 256 different grayscale values. And we can see an example for this on the next slide. In fact, there are many different image formats. And as we will see later, it is also possible to use a color table and save only a reference to this color table or an index for each pixel. Compressed images like JPEG or PNG optimize storage by reducing redundant information in the image, and this will be covered later in this course in detail. In 8-bit grayscale images, each pixel is stored as a single byte, allowing us to save 256 different intensity levels from black to white. And this representation is often used when color is not important, but the storage requirements should be kept low. By the way, the term frame buffer refers to a dedicated memory area that stores image data representing an entire frame or an image that will be displayed on the screen. And the term pit plane refers to a specific layer in the digital image where each pixel's value is represented by a single bit. So for example, if we have an 8-bit grayscale image, we would have eight different pit planes and each one represents the 2D area of the corresponding level of the pit. That means that the lower pit planes starting or belonging to the least significant pit contain smaller details of the image, while the pit plane of the most significant bit would contain the basic structure and brightness of the image. As I have already mentioned, full color images are represented with 24 bits for RGP. So we have three channels or components for red, green and blue, each one using 8 bits per pixel. And this totals to 16.7 million colors, which is also known as true color. An HD image using this format would require 6 megabytes approximately for storage. And if you also add the transparency channel, we would increase the required storage by 33%. The example on this slide shows us how the different color channels are combined to form the resulting RGB color image. In fact, it is also possible to store color images with only 8 bits per pixel. And this is typically done with a color lookup table, where each pixel simply saves an index into this table, and the table can be different for each image. So that means that we would select the most important colors for every image and still get a very good representation of the color, even though we only need 8 bits per pixel. So the resulting storage requirements would be similar to a grayscale image, 
but we would also have to save the color table. For the selection of these colors, we would compute a color histogram and use the 256 most representative colors, which we would then save in our color table. A typical image format using such a color table is the GIF format, but it not only uses a color lookup table, but also it reduces the storage requirements even further by using a compression algorithm, in particular the LCW algorithm, which aims for finding repeating sequences and using own smaller code words for these sequences so that we end up with way less bits in our image. As you probably know, a GIF file using the GIF 89 standard can also contain several images which are uh, used in a rotation manner in order to provide an animation. The next slide shows us the file format of GIF and it starts with a magic signature byte that identifies the GIF image. So if we just read the first byte, we immediately know this is a GIF file. After that, a screen descriptor follows, which contains the width and height of the image, as well as some other information. For example, if a global color table is used, and if so, it would follow directly after the screen descriptor. And then finally, for every image in the file, we have a raster area, which always starts with an image descriptor and a local color map. Finally, it is also important to understand the difference between spatial domain and frequency domain. So far, we have only covered the spatial domain where each pixel contains an intensity value. However, we can also convert the pixel values to frequency domain and store information about the pixel's rate of intensity change over neighboring regions. And this is mainly done because it has benefits for lossy compression, as we will see later. One example here would be DCT, the discrete cosine transform. We will cover this in detail in later chapters of this lecture. So that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching.